Well, hallelujah. It's great to be here. A great opportunity to share the word of God once again. And I was just looking at some things that men said or men did. And many great men and women have left their mark on our world by the things that they said and done. We heard and read of many epithets that go on gravestones and we, that people leave. <clears throat> But no one has left a mark on our world by what he said than the Lord Jesus Christ. And I give him his full title today because he's still alive, he's risen. And on this resurrected day, this Easter Sunday, as we know it, I want to share the greatest quotation ever spoken by the greatest man who ever lived. The Lord Jesus Christ. And I quote, I am the resurrection and the life. What an amazing statement. And it's in John's Gospel, chapter 11, and verse 25, that Jesus speaks to Martha and he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Now watch this. He said, He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And we've heard the scripture many, many times in church services. We've heard the scripture many, many times at funerals. But many times when we're at a funeral, we're so upset at the time that we don't take everything in and we don't take the scripture in and we don't ever understand what it truly means. Because many people know about life, they know about death, but very, very few people know about the resurrection. We're so knowledgeable concerning life and death. We hear it being spoke about all of the time, but very, very rarely we will hear someone speak about resurrection. And you're glad you listened in today. It's not just about death and life, but it's also about resurrection. In the last couple of months we've seen so many deaths from the coronavirus so I was just looking at some of the cases today approximately 1, 1,323,514 corona cases and then I've seen also where it said that 73,604 people have died because of this disease. 277,280 have recovered. This is a massive amount of people that have lost their lives. Many have lost someone. They've lost a loved one or know somebody has lost, that has lost a loved one. They've lost husbands, wives, sons and daughters, families and friends. Death is so real, folks. The Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die. But it's not all doom and gloom because we've got hope and our hope is in the resurrected Christ. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 4, the Apostle Paul says he comforts us in all of our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort that God has given to us. We see the NHS and many more, too numerous to name. They're doing an amazing job in helping to combat this dreadful disease and to bring comfort. We honour them. We honour them today. But today I've come with hope. Because today is a hope is a day of hope. Thank God that death is not the end. Thank God that the virus is not the end. In the book of Matthew chapter 23 and verses 31 through to 33, Jesus said, but concerning the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what was spoken to you by God saying, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but he's the God of the living. And the Bible says that when the multitude heard this, 
they were astonished at his teachings. This daunting poem was penned by an unknown soldier who was killed in World War II. He said, if death ends all, then evil must be good. Wrong must be right and beauty ugliness. God is a Judas who betrays his son and with a kiss damns all the world to hell if Christ rose not again. It's a tone that also reminds us of the Apostle Paul's reasoning as he speaks to us from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and he said if there's no the resurrection then our faith is in vain and we are yet still in our sin. He said now if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead how do some among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is empty also. Yes, and we are also found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ whom he did not raise up if in fact the dead do not rise. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most pitiful. But here's the good news. Now Christ is is risen from the dead and he's become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep for since by man came death by man also came the resurrection of the dead job in the old testament writing several thousand years ago articulates a question that has bothered mankind for centuries and in the book of job chapter 14 and verse 14 he says if a man dies Shall he live again? Human beings are fascinated by the mystery of death. Rather than the French master sculpture, best known for his sculpture, the thinker. He attempts to capture the emotions provoked by the first human death in a sculpture of Adam and Eve embracing the dead body of their son Abel. But instead of reflecting pain and sorrow, their faces seem inquisitive about the mystery of death. Curiosity about death has persisted throughout the ages. And even more than this, the curiosity of life after death. Fortune tellers have made millions of pounds a year fooling people about life after death, preying on their vulnerability. But Jesus has sent word that his friend Lazarus, the brother of both Mary and Martha, has become ill. And after hearing of Lazarus' illness, Jesus stayed where he was for two days. And then along with his disciples, he heads towards Bethany, where Lazarus and his sisters lived. When they arrived in Bethany, they were given the sad news that Lazarus, his friend, had been dead for four days. Many had come to comfort Mary and Martha, to mourn over Lazarus' death. And as Jesus approaches, Martha heard that he was coming and runs out to meet him. And this is where we pick up our story in the book of John chapter 11 and verses 21 to 26. Lord Martha said to Jesus, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask him. I like what she said there. I know if you ask God, God will give you whatever you ask him. But she didn't think she was good enough to receive anything herself from God. And there's a lot of us like that. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, 
Even though he dies and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? Do we actually believe this? Some people find this impossible to believe. The resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus brought the resurrection from the darkness to light. The Old Testament definitely speaks of a resurrection. And there's three accounts of people who were raised from the dead in the Old Testament. In the book of 1 Kings 17 it's recorded that Elisha, he raised the widow of Zelophat's son from the dead by calling out to the Lord. And then stretching himself across the young boy three times. In 2 Kings we read about Elisha. He raises the Shudamite woman's son by laying on him until his body grew warm. And then lay on him again. And the boy sneezed seven times and opened his eyes. He was alive. Resurrection. In 2 Kings 13.21, the story is told about a man's dead body that was thrown into Elisha's tomb. And it says when the body touched Elisha's bones, it came to life and stood on its feet. These are the only recorded accounts of the resurrection taken in the Old Testament. But the Old Testament does teach us of a future resurrection also. Our friend Job, chapter 19, 25 to 27, he says, I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand upon the earth and after my skin has been, been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes, I and not another. How my heart yearns within me. I love where he says that. How my heart yearns within me. Another version says, I am overwhelmed at the thought. And it's, an, it, it, it's, it's been overwhelmed. It's a, it's a heart yearning after the Lord Jesus Christ when you get to know him in his resurrected power. In the book of Luke chapter 24 and 32, talks about the two disciples along the Maus Road. And Jesus is speaking to them. They didn't recognize him at all. They didn't know who he was. But as he began to walk along side by side, he began to speak to them about the scripture. He began to show them himself and Moses and all the different things concerning the scripture. He began to speak to them about life. He began to speak to them about death. He began to speak to them about eternal life and resurrection. He began to speak to them about himself and they said a little bit like Job how my heart yearns with me they said did not our hearts born within us as we heard him reveal the scriptures to us they sat down together they had lunch they were breaking bread together and they began to recognize him they recognized the risen savior and they said did our hearts not born within us as Jesus disappeared from their midst. David wrote in the book of Psalm 16, 9, 9 to 11 and he said no wonder my heart is glad and I rejoice. My body rests in safety for you will not leave my soul amongst the dead or allow your holy one to rot in the grave. You will show me the way of life Granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasures of living with you forevermore. This was David talking about the resurrection. And that's what we're celebrating today. We're celebrating Easter Sunday. We're celebrating the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Isaiah 25 verse 8, we're promised that God will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away every tear from all of our faces. Again in Isaiah 26, Isaiah promises that your dead will live. Their bodies will rise. You who dwell in the dust, wake up and shout for joy. 
Your dew is like the dew of the morning and the earth will give birth to her death. See, the teachings of the resurrection have always been there. They've always been there since the beginning of time. But, it's been, but it has been somewhere in obscurity and in the background. And it's never really been brought out into the light. But here we see Jesus bringing out the resurrection to life. It was Jesus who brought the truth of the resurrection to life. In John 8, 32, he said, I am the light of the world. And whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. John 8, 12, Jesus speaks again to the people and once more he says, I am the light of the world. He said, if you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the life, the light that leads to life. See, this verse speaks of the light of his truth, the light of his word, the light of eternal light, the light of the resurrection, illumination, and those who perceive the true light will never again walk in spiritual darkness. As Jesus begins to minister to Mary and Martha, he told Martha, your brother will rise again. And Martha was aware of a coming resurrection, for she said, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. But Jesus said, I am the resurrection. By his teachings, his miracles, the raising of the woman's son at Nain, Jairus' daughter, raised from the dead, a young 12-year-old girl, Lazarus, risen after four days, and his own resurrection. Jesus clearly taught the resurrection of the human body. He has declared once and for all that death is real, that there is life after death, and the body will one day be raised by the power of God. Isn't that exciting? Isn't it exciting to know that it's when we die, it's not everything is over? Because the New Testament teaches us that resurrected believers will be like the risen Christ. In the following scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15, 49, it says, And just as we bore the likeness of the early man, the earthly man speaking about Adam, so shall we bear the likeness of the man from heaven. Philippians 3, 21 says, Who by the power that enabled him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Isn't that exciting? Isn't that exciting? He'll transform our lowly bodies, it says, so that they will be like his glorious body. And in 1 John 3, 2, Jesus says, Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Isn't it exciting? Isn't it exciting to know when we see uh, uh, and hear so much about death and see how much, see how much of this thing, thing is going on that we can see hope, the hope of the resurrection, that it is, not, it is not over, that Jesus brought from the shadows the truth of those that are in Christ and will receive a body like his resurrected body one day. See, you and I, who are in Christ, we will receive a body like the Lord Jesus Christ. Someone might be curious today and say, what kind of a body, what kind of a resurrected body did Jesus have? Well, it was a body of flesh and bones. It was a body that retained the, the wounds of the crucifixion. It was a body capable of eating fish around the fire and having fellowship with his friends. It was a body that was able to disappear from the crowds. It was a body 
that was able to appear to the crowds. But what made it different, and what will make our bodies different, is that the resurrected body will never die. The resurrection accounts of the Old Testament as well as the New Testament were limited in the sense that people eventually did die again. Lazarus, an exciting time, a very, very exciting time for a man and his family who was dead for four days, who was raised to life. We don't know how many more years he lived, but we do know one day he died. The woman's son from Nain, our only support, excited he might have went on to live for years and taken care of his mother. But he met death once again. Young girl, Jairus' daughter, she might have went on in life, grown up and married, had family of her own. But one day she too met with her death. But the resurrected body we will receive will be like the Lord's and will never die. It will never die. That makes me excited. It will never die. Jesus has indeed brought the resurrection from the darkness into the light. He's illuminated and given you and I resur uh, resurrection and he's given you and I the way things are going to be. So we have hope. Even though we look and we see all the misery and stuff that's going on. One day Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. He said to the people who believed him, you are truly my disciples, he said. If you remain faithful to my teaching and you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. There's freedom. There's liberty. In all of the word that Jesus has spoken. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except they come through me. I don't know about you, my friend, today. I don't know where you are, where you're at, what you believe, what you don't believe. But I do know one time that I was lost, that I didn't know Jesus, that I didn't know anything about the resurrection. I didn't know anything about this stuff. I was lost. I was without hope. I had no belief. But one day somebody shared with me the glorious gospel, the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ, how he died on a cross. How he was bruised, his body was bruised and broken and battered for me so that I could be made whole. His blood was shed from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet as that blood poured out. His life blood poured out for my sin and every single sin that I've done, past, present and future, was washed away by the blood of Jesus. Without the shedding of blood, there would have been no forgiveness of sin. But I thank God that by this gospel, Paul said, by this gospel you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word I preach unto you, he said, otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I have received, I've passed to you of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture and he was buried and he raised on the third day according to the scripture Jesus said do you believe this see today is a great opportunity when we think of Easter we think about the Lord Jesus Christ rising again and we think one day we can rise also and all we need to do, Jesus said, is believe in him, is trust in him. Is to repent of our sin, turn away from that which we know is wrong. And to turn to him and say, Lord Jesus, I've lived my life long enough. I've lived the, all these years without you, without hope. But today I need hope. 
I need the hope of the resurrection. I need to know deep down in my heart and my spirit that one day I too will rise again and I will have a body like the Lord Jesus and I will spend my eternity with him. Because Jesus himself said the thief he came to kill. He came to destroy. But Jesus said that I have come that you might have life and have it to the full. So today is a great day, a day of remembrance, Easter, to open up your heart and say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Lord Jesus, be my saviour. Help me by the power of your Holy Spirit to live from this day, to live for you. I give my life to you and I thank you for dying on the cross. I thank you for raising up from the dead. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you've done it all for me. If I had been the only one of the world, you would have died for me. John said, for God so loved the world. You can put your name there where the world is. For God so loved Pat and Peter and Paul and Mary. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, the whosoever being the Pat, Paul and Mary, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but would have eternal life. He said, I've not come into this world to condemn the world, but that the world through me might be saved. I want to tell you folks this morning that you are part of that world, that God loves you with an everlasting love, and he wants you to live in darkness no longer. He wants the light of the resurrection to shine upon you and to shine upon your family, and he wants to give you eternal life. And all you have to do is open up your heart and say, yes, I accept your gift, Jesus. Yes, Jesus, I believe what you've done. I believe you are indeed the resurrection and the life. I believe that no man comes to the Father except by you. And I want to come today. That's my prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for me. Thank you for raising from the dead. Thank you for dying for my sins and coming into this world for me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow. Okay, so if you're a church online and you didn't indicate below that you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, as your Lord and Savior, or you need prayer, get in touch with us online. Let us know. So the Lord bless you till I see you again.